We're always looking for new ways to reach our target audience across the web. There are lots of self-serve platforms out there, and we've talked about a number of them on this channel, but today I want to add one to the list, and that's Snapchat. Snapchat has 229 daily active users on the platform. They have a trillion dollars in buying power just between the millennials and Gen Z generations, and people usually spend about 30 minutes on the platform every single day. So there's a lot of opportunity there. You just have to tap into it. I think one of the things that scares people off and they don't really look at Snapchat that much is they just don't know what the targeting options are and how you can reach your audience. So that's what we're going to take care of today. We're going to run through all of the available targeting options on Snapchat ads. Let's hop in. Okay, so once you're in the Snapchat interface, I've already skipped through, as you can see down here at the bottom, they've got kind of this progress bar. I've already skipped past campaign and now we're in ad sets. This is where all the targeting for Snapchat ads are going to live. At the beginning of your ad set, you're gonna put in all this information about ads, but that is not what this video is about. So we're gonna focus on the targeting options in the platform. When you start off, you'll be at automatic placements and those are recommended. You can click this radial dial and open it up into edit placement. And you'll see there are two main groups, either between content, so ads watched between stories and professional content, or within content, which are ads watched within professional and curated content. You can click this checkbox here to say that you only wanna show in user stories as opposed to the other stories that are on the platform. The nice part down here is you can also decide what types of content you'll show up next to. This is one of the interesting things about Snapchat compared to some of the other social platforms. So you'll see there's just this basic include exclude selector here. So I'll just leave that on include, but then on category, you can choose what types of content you want to show up next to. Let's say you want to show up next to science and technology content. So you can click that and you'll see a checkbox next to it. But if you want to also exclude at the same time, let's say sports, you can check a box and now you'll be including science and technology, excluding sports, just in case some of those kind of match up. That's something to keep in mind is if you really want to make sure that you either do or don't show up next to certain content, there are a handful of preset groups here and you can see all of them. There's no more groupings outside of this. So take a look at that if that's something that you want to control. For right now, I'm just going to leave it on automatic placements. And next is locations. This is where we can start to target our ads. You'll see by default, we're set up to the United States. You can click in here and do a browse by region or metro. So if we go into region, open it up and that'll show all of the different states within the United States. Or if we open up metro, that will show up different types of larger city groups in here. If I type in Indianapolis, now Indianapolis shows up. But just keep in mind, this is not quite as robust as a list. You might not find smaller towns listed in this metro area. So just keep that in mind. So for right now, I'm going to take this off. Now, when I first checked into this box, I ran through the region and metro section, but you can add additional countries to your list as well. So you can change the countries that you want to target in the same way that LinkedIn has the continents chosen first. That's the same way that Snapchat does. So you can see that we're currently in the North America group and there are a handful of countries that will show up here. But if you want to target Europe, you can come over here and now they've got another list of the different countries that are in Europe that you can target on Snapchat. So keep that in mind. Also like Facebook, they do have an upload locations in bulk section. If you just click the blue link and come in here, you can choose the country that your upload locations will come from. We'll just leave it on United States and you can tell it that you want to include or exclude certain states or postal codes. And then you just enter that information down here below. The last way you can target locations is to do so by using this target locations on a map function. Now, for some reason on the day that I'm recording this video, the map itself isn't loading. So I wanna try and show you this without seeing the actual map down here. So you can see that you can search any address, place, or category. So I'm just gonna come in here and just type a letter and kind of show you guys what comes up. So I just typed in an M and now you can see some of these location categories. There are ATMs, pharmacies, theme parks, comedy clubs, music venues, all these different things that sort of show up. We could also type in a different letter. Let's go with L. So it looks up delis, travel, florists, car rental, and you can add or exclude these. So let's say that if you wanted to target all of the car rental places in a certain area, you can do that. So let's go ahead and add car rentals. And now it's gonna show up and look like this. So within the United States, any car rental 
and within five miles of that location category. Pretty cool, right? So now you can start to target people based on the type of location that they're in. But for right now, I'm just gonna hit reset so that'll stop trying to figure out what's going on. So now we're getting into the demographic targeting. And this is where you can start to tell that Snapchat has a younger audience on the platform because their ages range from 13 on the young end to 50 plus. And in the same way as you would on Facebook, you can choose by individual age increments what you want your target age range to be. So keep that in mind up here. Gender is the same as usual. It's got all male and female. And then languages, again, pretty standard. There are a handful of preset languages that you can choose from on Snapchat and just choose the one that makes the most sense for you. And then advanced demographics. This is where we start to get into a little bit more robust targeting that other platforms just don't have. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so we'll be able to see this list that pops up. So let's open up here. And the first thing you'll notice is that they all have this name in front of them, which is Data Logics. That is a data provider and it allows Snapchat to have a lot of different types of programmatic sort of audiences in place that maybe Google and Facebook don't have or don't have represented in this way. I think that you can utilize them on some plat on those platforms, but you have to go about it in a little bit different way. With Snapchat, they're right here in the self-serve platform. This means that we can target people who have a HHI or household income of $100,000 to $200,000. There are lots of different ranges here. Also people of high net worth, which is effectively above that 250K range or something above there. You can find people who are married, moms, moms because their kids are in grade school, moms because their kids are in high school, moms because their kids are in preschool or they're new moms or new parents. Lots of different targeting options in here. So I encourage you to take a look at all of the different audiences that are in here. Experian is another data provider. They have their own sets, whether it's education, another piece of household income, going down to life events, maybe people just moved or finding, again, different ways of finding moms on the platform. Unfortunately, there's not many dads. That doesn't seem very progressive in my mind. Um, but you can also find people based on their occupation, all sorts of stuff, and whether they have a kid in the house. So there's lots of different targeting options in here that you can start to layer in on top of your Snapchat ads by using these data providers and the different insights they have into audience members. Really cool stuff there. All right, so then let's scoot down to the audiences section down here. And the first thing that we've got here is what Snapchat calls a predefined audience. So what I'm going to do is just click this drop down and you can see there are four major categories that you see show up. Lifestyles, shoppers, viewers, and visitors. So let's go into each of these and just get a little bit of a taste of what these look like. I can tell you that I will not be able to go through each one of these on this whole video. We'll have to kind of skim and give a little bit of an idea of what each one is because there's quite a lot in here. So with lifestyle, now we can start to see that there are different groups here. So adventure seekers, automotive enthusiasts, bookworms, and avid readers. And the name over here, Snapchat, tells you that Snapchat is the source of that data. And if you want to target one of them, just click the checkbox next to the name. And then you can see that things moved. This ad set estimate changed over here. If I click out of it, now we have just in the same way that we showed the categories earlier, you can tell what you're targeting because there's a green check mark next to it. And if you ever want to get rid of it, you just hover over the name and there'll be an X here that you can click on and it goes away. And now our ad set estimates go right back to targeting effectively the run of the network in the United States at this point. But let's keep hopping through these. So these lifestyles, those are mostly self-explanatory. You can kind of figure out what's there. So film and TV fans, you can open that up and see people who like comedy or cord cutters, meaning the people who are getting rid of cable and focusing on streaming services like Netflix and Hulu and all of the different one-off streaming apps that we can have nowadays. And if we close that category, we can see there are a lot more anything from green living enthusiasts enthusiasts, to men's lifestyles, money minders, pet and animal lovers, all sorts of stuff. Definitely take a look, scroll through those, and find what type of lifestyles you want to target on the Snapchat platform. So the second major category is shoppers. So let's open that one up. Now we'll see a couple other brand names, Data Logics, which we've seen before, and Nielsen, which are going to be, like I said, two other data providers. So all the shopper data is coming from these outside providers. So let's open this up. And the first one you see is apparel and shoppers. So this is coming from Visa. So anybody shopping for 
for children's apparel, footwear, jewelry, luxury apparel, men's and women's, all that stuff coming through here, you can target each of those. What about automotive shoppers? And this is broken apart by the different things they wanna go after. So auto parts and accessories, tires, full-size sedans, all this good stuff. Luxury SUVs, in-market, used. There are lots of different categories that we have on here. And I'm gonna close this down a little bit so we can see things. Close the apparel shoppers. So you can see that there are a lot of them here. Children's products, consumer tech, eco-conscious shoppers is just a category by itself. Grocery, money minders, movers, pet owners, lots of stuff here. Travelers is another cool one. People traveling, whether they're on a budget or they're business travelers, or maybe they need a car rental, people who like to go on cruises, so on and so forth. Lots of different targeting options that we can have there through data logics. Nielsen is also in this shoppers category, and this one's a little bit different, and it might be interesting to some people. So if we open up apparel buyers, because we looked at that earlier, you'll notice that this is different than the one we saw before. It's not about shoes and clothes and women's clothes. This is broken down by brand. This is people who shop for Abercrombie and Fitch, Ann Taylor, Burlington Coat Factory, people searching for Forever 21, H&M, J. Crew, Nike, Old Navy, TJ Maxx. Victoria's Secret has three listings, which seems interesting. Shoe store buyers, DSW versus Foot Locker versus Lady Foot Locker. Lots of different individual brands showing up here. The same thing with auto, we looked at that earlier. So now they're just automotive buyers, car part buyers, and these are again, brands if you're not familiar with them, AutoZone, Napa, Pet Boys, O'Reilly, all this stuff. So when you come into the Nielsen group, know that this is gonna start being broken apart by actual brands, Budweiser, Coors, Corona, as opposed to just avid beer drinkers. Keep that in mind, there's definitely lots of breakdowns that you can find within Nielsen to give you a different look than what that data logic set had at the beginning. Okay, so that's shoppers. What about viewers? These are coming mostly from Comscore, but these are a lot of people that are just watching entertainment. Whether it's light TV viewers, heavy TV viewers, people watching certain live events like the Emmys, the Academy Awards, Grammys. What network do they watch? ABC, AMC, CBS, all this stuff. Stuff. These are all broken down by channel that people watch and the types of content that they watch. Take a look at that and see if maybe for whatever reason, the types of folks that you're going after, they're the same types of folks that watch ESPN and the Food Network. Who knows? Maybe those are the types of people that you need to target or home movie viewers, whether it's drama or action, whatever it be. And then the last group here is visitors. And this again is very different from what we see in other platforms. So if I open this up, we can see that there are a number of categories to start. So auto dealers, banks, dining establishments, entertainment, retail and travel. So I'm gonna open up a couple of these. So let's just look at auto dealer visitors. We can open this up and see Asian vehicle dealers, big three, Chevy, European, Ford dealers, Honda dealers, luxury dealers. These are all broken apart into different categories. Certainly not all the brands are covered and maybe not all the segments are covered. But again, if you know your audience is avid Ford truck drivers, you can target that on Snapchat. So let's close that one down. Now let's look at travel. I thought this one was very interesting. So you can open up travel and find business travel venues. Anybody who's been to a car rental location recently, you'll remember earlier we saw in the location targeting that there is a layer for car rental. They're kind of piggybacking off of that to let you target those types of folks here. Commercial airports or tourist destinations. But then if you open up hotels, in the same way in the Nielsen section, we see individual brands, people who've been to a Best Western or a Courtyard by Marriott or a Hilton Chain Hotel recently will all show up in this different audience. So this is a way that you can start to target people by the brands that they associate with. Because for whatever reason, there might be a difference in the people who go to a Choice Hotel versus a Hampton Inn and Suites. And now you can target them and speak to them differently on the Snapchat platform. Okay, that rounds out the different audiences that we have in the predefined section. You will see this custom audiences down here and it says no audience available, quite frankly, because this is just a placeholder campaign. But these custom audiences are what we've come to know as just our regular types of remarketing lists, whether they're people who are from a CRM list, site engagement, lookalike, site visitors, something like that. And you can find those in the audience manager. When you come to create an audience, like I said, this is just a placeholder account. You'll click get started. It'll tell you, you can create a custom lookalike or saved audience. Saved audience is exactly what it is on Facebook. You're taking the targeting that is within the Snapchat platform and creating a saved audience around it. Lookalike audience, again, same thing. You give the lookalike algorithm a 
root audience, a seed audience, and it will create a lookalike off of that. But a custom audience is what we can create for our retargeting types of purposes. Snapchat has the ability to target customer lists, website events, mobile app events, and ad engagement. Very similar to other platforms, but this is just what it looks like on Snapchat. Okay, so hopping back in here, the last section I wanna talk about for targeting is just around the devices that you can target on this platform. You can target by operating system. You can say all or Android or iOS are your two categories. You can then start to target by device makes that come up here. So by the brand that shows up. Apple, lots of us have iPhones, but you can target by iPad and third gen, fourth gen, fifth gen iPad 2, iPad Air 3, iPad Pro, the different inch parameters that you have here, iPad mini, and then you start getting into the iPhone Pro Max, iPhone 11 Pro, all of this stuff is in here. And this gives you a lot of control over who sees your ads, how you design your ads for different device types to make sure that your ad looks as good as it possibly can. So let's say you have a Lenovo, whether it's a Key 5 Note or a Vibe K6, whatever you've got, or a Motorola, something Thing, Moto C, who knows? Any of these you can choose from whatever device types you want and create ads or target audiences specifically for those device makes. And then lastly, you can target people by their connection type. You can say that it's all, whether they're on the cell phone network and using data effectively, or whether they're connected to Wi-Fi. Then you can lastly target people based on their carrier. And this is by who provides the data to them. There are lots of different options as there are lots of different phone providers out there, AT&T, is one of the big ones in the US. I would highly suggest that you just do a quick search for the one that you want to show up. So let's say you want to find Verizon, just type it in click Verizon, and now you're targeting people who are using Verizon as their cell phone carrier. As you can see, there are lots of ways to reach your target audience on Snapchat, whether you're going on demographics, the different places that they visited, some of your different website audiences, there's a lot you can do. So hopefully I've demystified this a little bit and you feel confident hopping into Snapchat. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you wanna get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.